Good evening. I'm Sherwin Doss, and I'd like to start by showing you an image taken recently by one of our partner organizations in the Democratic Republic of Congo. These are Congolese children watching Saturday morning cartoons in the neighborhood of Ndosho in Goma, the provincial capital of conflict-affected Eastern DRC. The movie hall is a street-side storefront using a diesel generator for power. Less than 3% of Goma's inhabitants have access to electricity, even less than the national average of 8%. This is the rule and not the exception in many crisis settings around the world. I've spent much of my career in communities like these, working for the United Nations in conflict-affected and post-conflict environment, environments in the Balkans, Eastern Europe, and Central Africa. My work has involved engaging stakeholders at all levels to promote more peaceful, stable societies. A few years ago, I became aware of the renewable energy revolution, sweeping much of the developed and developing world. Costs for solar, wind, and battery storage technology are now often more competitive than fossil fuels. However, the renewable energy revolution that we've witnessed hasn't reached many of the countries where I have worked, countries like DRC. So in my view, the renewable energy revolution has not been equitable, even though it is in these places like Ndosho, where communities have the most to gain from the kind of transformation that is taking place elsewhere. So I sought out some like-minded folks, and we founded an organization called Energy Peace Partners. And we put together a team of experts who knew something about preventing conflict and promoting peace on the one hand, and about renewable energy development and finance on the other. We looked at this problem and developed a set of approaches that we thought could be part of the solution. Here are a few things that we learned. We noticed that the number of people affected by conflict today is unprecedented, a phenomenon increasingly exacerbated by climate change. A record 71 billion people are forcibly displaced, and humanitarian and peacekeeping expenditures today are at record levels. Interestingly, many of these conflict-affected communities are also some of the least electrified. We observed, as you can see from this map, that there are almost one billion people who live in 27 countries that are the most threatened by conflict and climate change, and at the same time have some of the lowest levels of electrification in the world. These became our target countries. We heard numerous anecdotes from the field that diesel markets in many crisis settings are often controlled by conflict actors. So this reliance on fossil fuels may actually be sustaining conflicts and perpetuating a vicious cycle. Most importantly, we learned that renewable energy investment in countries like DRC is extremely limited, and access to finance remains a key problem. Very little of the $450 billion in global climate finance last year went towards supporting renewable energy in fragile, energy-poor countries like Congo, given their unique contextual risks and challenges. And then we look closely at the $1 billion market in energy attribute certificates. These markets are an important part of the global carbon accounting system. EACs are virtual commodities that can be unbundled from the electricity produced from a renewable energy plant, 
traded and used by the purchaser to make a renewable energy claim. Many companies meet their renewable energy goals in a number of ways, including by purchasing energy attribute certificates. This map shows countries that issue energy attribute certificates, known as Renewable Energy Certificates, or RECs, in North America, Guarantees of Origin in Europe, and IRECs in the rest of the world. Energy attribute certificate markets are well established in North America and Europe, and have been emerging in Asia and Latin America. However, as you can see, there are few markets for IRECs on the African continent, where one in two people do not have access to electricity. In fact, as of September of last year, there were only three IREC issuing countries in all of Africa. And if we superimpose the map of our target countries, again, those which are severely conflict affected, climate vulnerable, and poorly electrified, with current IREC issuing countries, you will see that there is little overlap. There are, in fact, few energy attribute certificate markets in our target countries. And so we developed something called the Peace Renewable Energy Credit, or PREC. The PREC takes the energy attribute certificate, or REC, concept and extends it to fragile energy deficient countries where the ability to invest in renewable energy has historically been limited. PREC's create value for renewable energy generated in countries like DRC, while allowing companies concerned about climate and sustainability to support specific and impactful projects in communities like Ndosho. So how does this work in practice? This is an image of our first Peace Renewable Energy Credit project, a 1.3 megawatt commercial off-grid solar mini-grid commissioned about one week ago by Nuru, our Congolese developer partner. It's Sub-Saharan Africa's largest off-grid solar hybrid mini-grid. Nuru, incidentally, means light in Swahili. The system now provides renewable power to 700 households and, enterprise, and anchor enterprise clients in an area that has never had grid infrastructure. Over the past year, we worked with Nuru to determine how additional revenue from the prospective sale of PREX issued from this system could expand the scope of what they were doing in the community. The developer co-designed a project with community stakeholders that will entail the construction of mini-grid connected streetlights in Dosho that will improve safety and security, allow businesses to stay open at night, and serve as a potential deterrent to armed groups moving under cover of darkness. Revenue from the sale of PREX from this solar mini-grid will fund these streetlights allowing traditional renewable energy market actors who have never had an opportunity to support renewable energy in communities like these an opportunity to do so. Because of our efforts, the board of the IREC Standard Foundation in October authorized us to be a country issuer of IRECs in the DRC, making Congo only the fourth country in Africa to be an IREC issuing country and effectively kickstarting the Congolese energy attribute certificate market. I should add that a PREC is an IREC or a traditional renewable energy certificate with a supplementary label from our organization that will certify the peace building benefits associated with this new renewable energy generation. Our aspiration is that beyond funding modest but important community impact projects, PREX will soon help to de-risk renewable energy projects and make them more bankable for our developer partners working in these challenging settings. So that PREX sales can actually help to get renewable, renewable energy projects financed and built. Corporate PREX commitments 
would help Nuru scale and expand across all of DRC, starting with their eight megawatt pipeline of solar in 2020, and followed by another 15 megawatts in their next phase. We are piloting PREX in the DRC and tend to roll out and intend to roll out PREC projects throughout Sub-Saharan Africa and beyond. Our aim is to be an authorized PREC issuer in all 27 of our target countries and to create a functioning global marketplace for this new instrument. What's most exciting is that the PREC provides a market mechanism, a market mechanism that links specific renewable energy projects in these settings with companies interested in supporting renewable energy in an impactful way. I'm happy to report that interest from companies so far has been most encouraging. We believe that solutions like the Peace Renewable Energy Credit can contribute to making a difference in communities like Ndosho, where increased access to sustainable and affordable power can be transformative. Thank you.